Hi there, my name is Alexander Jensenius and I'm a professor of music technology here at the University of Oslo. And today in this very short uh, little uh, lecture, I'm going to talk about uh, what a musical instrument is and try to explain a little bit more about how I'm thinking about that as a music technologist. So if we get started uh, with this, my, my interest here is really to try to see how we can combine two different disciplines that I uh, am very fascinated about. And one is that about trying to understand what a musical, what the musical experience is when you as a person listen to music. And this is a field we call cognition, music cognition, and it's part of music psychology where we try to understand what's actually going on when we experience uh, music. On the other side, uh, as a music technologist, I'm also interested in different types of technologies and in particular instruments. So if you think about this as a guitar, for example, uh, an instrument and a person playing that instrument, how, um, how does the instrument work? What's going on really in this? Um, and the field of, of uh, studying instruments is that of organology. And I'm trying to understand how organology and music cognition relates to each other and how they can uh, influence each other in, in different ways. And the starting point for uh, all of this is that of, of instruments. And, and let's start thinking about acoustic instruments, where you may have uh, kind of touch-based instruments like this. This is a small finger piano that you can play by. You touch it, um, you touch the, the surface that actually produces the sound. Uh, so you are directly uh, controlling the, uh, the sound, pr sound producing objects of, of these instruments. So, so these are uh, touch based uh, or contact based um, instruments where you are in, in direct contact with the, the vibrating element. Um, in many cases you also have instruments where you use tools in between and, and here now I just brought some drumsticks to to explain that when you're dealing with this, you have something in between yourself and the sound producing uh, object. In this case, it would have been a drum. Um, but there are other tool based instruments as well. For example, a violin, you're using a bow. Um, and it's the same thing that you are removing yourself a little bit more from being in direct control of, of the sound producing object. So you can call these tool based um, instruments. And then another traditional instrument um, is that of the piano, where you have a mechanical element in between, uh, where the idea is that you touch on the key, and the key hits another part of the mechanism of the piano, and then finally you, you touch the string, but then it's a lot of mechanical elements before you reach to that, that point. So these are kind of traditional acoustic instruments that uh, you may think of um, here. But there are also some other instruments that I'm interested in trying to understand more about. And one is that of the human voice, which can be thought of as more of a, a kind of embodied instrument. Um, and there are also other embodied instruments, for example, clapping. Um, you're producing also sound with your body and uh, you're obviously very kind of in close contact with, with the, 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 the sound producing object itself. So, on this side, you can say that it's kind of the most embodied type of instruments. And then as we move over here, we're getting uh, less and less kind of a bodily control over the, uh, the uh, this actual sound coming out of the instrument. Now, what happens then over here? And here we get into a territory where we have more automatic instruments. And this is an example of uh, one such instrument. It's kind of a music box. We can play it by... So I put energy into it here by using this crank and the melody is pre-programmed into this thing so I'm, I'm playing it as, I, as I'm moving. So this is a mechanical instrument where I have a kind of continuous control of the sonic output in the sense that I can um, put energy into it in the start and stop. Here's a different one. Um, this one is even more automatic because it's, I just open it and it will start to play by itself. And is this a musical instrument? Many people would probably say no, but I, I would say yes. I mean, we, we do um, an action on, on this instrument and it will play sound. So the, even though they are mechanic or automatic in self-playing, um, it is producing musical sound, although with much lesser control you can think of um, than, for example, over here. 
And then finally, um, yet another type of, of instrument can be that of imaginary instruments, where the idea is that you can only think about the instrument um, and uh, it doesn't exist. So you can think of a, a say, a silver guitar with 10 meter long strings, and that doesn't exist, of course, but you can still think about how it would sound like if it had existed. So this is also an interesting type of, of instruments, I think. So that's the acoustic instruments. Now, if we then move over to thinking about what many people would call digital or electronic instruments, um, I, would, I would call them electroacoustic because they do produce sound, audible sound in the end, even though they are using electronic means to, to get to that. Um, then we can start by thinking about analog instruments. So for example, this little synthesizer here that I can play by moving here and I can change these buttons and it will produce different types of sounds. So here I have quite direct control over the, the sound um, and it's an it's kind of analog electronics on the inside of this. So it's uh, we can put it somewhere here perhaps that it's fairly, fairly controllable and direct. Um, and there are also some examples of even more kind of embodied uh, analog synthesizers, like for example this Fracker box here. That is based on a very simple uh, electronic design, and where I can play it by putting my fingers on it, and I will start producing sound when my sweat is shortcutting these circuits. So it's a quite unpredictable instrument, but it's very embodied, I would say, in the sense that I actually uh, use my own body as part of the electronic circuit here. So there are some interesting cases of instruments there. But when talking about digital or ele electroacoustic instruments, then the digital category, or where you have digital sound processing, is perhaps what most people are familiar with these days. And here we have, for example, we can take up a, a, a an app where we can have, for example, quite uh, direct control of the sound being made. So it's a kind of a quite direct mapping. But there are also other instruments where there's much less of a kind of direct connection between what you're doing and what's coming. So here I can add notes being played here, but they also play themselves and kind of repeat. So in the world of digitally produced sounds in such electroacoustic instruments, there are a number of different kind of things to think about, including what kind of branches over to the automatic ones of different kinds. And also here you can think of also imaginary um, electroacoustic instruments that you can only think about and doesn't exist. And even in the world of artificial intelligence, you can even have uh, computer-based systems that produce sound that's inaudible to the, to the human ear, but that kind of creates musical compositions and listens to them uh, as well. So it's a lot of different things going on here. So as you see, there, is, uh, there are some parallels here between the different um, the different instruments, both the acoustic ones and the electroacoustic ones. And there are also some interesting examples of in-between uh, cases here. Now, what is then at the core of a lot of what I've been talking about so far is that of uh, having sound being output and also then that it's the sound is produced by some kind of action that we put into this where the action produces sound but also in many ways you can say that the sound also produces action because you get the kind of feedback loop between yourself and the instrument, which is very important for, for all musicians, of course, but that we also think is, is important when it comes to how we perceive music in the, in the first place. Now, actions and sounds can come in many different flavors. So you can have actions that are impulsive, for example, that can, that can also have then uh, sonic outputs that will also be a well, kind, of a, kind of impulsive character. You can have more sustained type of uh, actions that will lead to more sustained sounds. And in between you can have what we call iterative sounds that kind of have some kind of uh, rhythmic periodic shape. And where the idea then is that you can have either some kind of iterative action going into this 
or the instrument can be constructed in such a way that you can have more of a sustained action, but the instrument has some qualities that makes the sound a little bit iterative. So these are kind of the main categories that you find in acoustic instruments. In uh, electroacoustic instruments, the mappings are created uh, by the designers of the instrument, so you can essentially have any type of mapping. And as music technologists, one of our jobs is to try to figure out how to create good, better and interesting mappings between action and sound in, in, in different ways. Now, if you think back then at the original model we put up of a person then performing on an instrument like this, you have then the kind of the feedback loop here also between mind and body. And then you have also a person experiencing this on the other hand, where you also have kind of a feedback loop going on between, between them. So this is what you can call then the, per the performer and the perceiver. And in a traditional setup, the performer and the perceiver are kind of quite clear categories that are separate from each other and where you can have a kind of more linear uh, type of uh, thing going on from the performer to the perceiver. But to get to that, of course, someone also needs to uh, make some music. And so there's typically a composer originally, and uh, traditional thinking. And also um, the, the luthier, the person making the instrument, also had to make an instrument first so that the composer can, can make something. So all of these are kind of, kind of happening before music is being performed. And the interesting thing today is that we see that these two kind of start to merge to, to some extent, but we also see that the kind of the performer often kind of gets more into improvisation, for example, and also gets into the composition itself. And when it comes to electroacoustic instruments, often the performer may even start producing and, and or mo modifying the instrument, uh, his or her self, so that you actually get this kind of also kind of more interaction going on between these categories. The same thing you can see between the performer and perceiver because with apps I showed, the perceiver is also going into the role of the performer often where you can actually start taking part in producing the sound yourself as well. And then finally, from a more kind of academic perspective, you can think of the analyst as a fourth category here that's also uh, involved in, in the whole chain for typically often then analyzing what's going on uh, 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 from the per perceiver perspective or from the performer perspective, but in many cases also then interacting and feeding back again to the, uh, to the luthiers and composers and how to develop these things. So what I think is fascinating now, if looking at kind of the music technology world, is that there's a lot of new things happening here where we get kind of crossover between the different categories. And it's a lot of also convergence now where things kind of point towards the center. So what I find fascinating is to see how we can kind of develop things kind of in between here where we really start playing with the roles uh, of the traditional kind of music uh, categories and where ultimately we may get to very new and, and inspiring instruments and also then uh, better and new and inspiring music. So if you're interested in learning more about these things, then you can come and study with us at the University of Oslo um, at different levels and you can learn more from me and also from my colleagues.